Hello there, everyone. So, rather than being good morning, it's more good afternoon, and as such, I've decided to change up my surroundings. So, here I am in my backyard. So, I wanted to bring two cutting patterns slash cutting exercises for you today, and they're going to be a little bit different because neither of these are German. Um, instead, the first one will be the use of the arming sword in the Gaelic style, which is all um, speculative stuff done by the Caterin Society. Um, I get this from the book The Scorners of Death, which is a rather interesting book, a good insight into some speculative work on how the Gales might have fought. Um, this one in particular uses the arming sword and can also be done in combination with the Targ. I have my Rotella there on the floor. I'm going to go over it um, first without and then with. And then the other one we'll be going over is a Fiore style cutting pattern that I improvised. So, let's start off with the uh, Scorners of Death cutting pattern. So firstly, like I said, this is all speculative. Um, we have no primary sources, we have some accounts, um, but that's really the best we get. So what those at the Catarin Society did is they decided to kind of meld some contemporary techniques with how the backsword is used in old style. So a lot of the footwork is very traverse-like, which is a good thing to practice anyway. So what this cutting pattern is designed to do is it's supposed to take you through all of the speculative guards, of which we have our initial guard, our sort of open guard, the left hand being held up. Um, this is due to the primary, the predominant use of either a gauntleted hand, a buckler, or a targe, or something along those lines, or even um, based upon speculative accounts of Irish cudgel play, in which case they often say that the left forearm is kept here to receive blows, which, due to the pro prevalence of using clubs, not necessarily all that bad of an idea, and I'd certainly rather take a blow on the arm than I would my head. But, so the left hand's held up here, which is also good training in case you don't have a shield. Um, first we have the sort of open guard, in which case my hand is kept back, very similar to Lugesland or Vamtag, and my right foot is slightly forward. I'm currently standing in an open stance as though I were doing my traversal outside guard. So my right foot is slightly forward, but they can be somewhat parallel, okay? For reasons of personal training, I've decided not to do any left foot forward stuff. Um, would they have done it historically? Probably. But since this is all speculative anyway, I've decided to use it to continue to enforce good traversal type footwork. So I will not be putting my left foot in front of my right foot unless I am doing a grappling action. So, because in the end this is all about fun and training anyway. So, my right foot is only slightly in front of my left foot, my knees are bent, my posture is upright, and my sword is held relatively close to my head. I am not letting the point go behind me, it's just there. Okay, that's our first position and we're going to cut downward with a right foot forward step into our second position, which is the underarm guard, okay? This, of course, being similar to the uh, first ward in 133, though rather than having the edge up, we have the edge down, okay? Um, though you could certainly do it with the edge up, it doesn't really matter, but I've taken a right foot uh, forward step, so now I'm nice and relatively linear, not, you know, super linear, but just more linear. I am decidedly right foot forward. From here, I'm going to cut up with the short edge as I turn my sword, okay? This little flick. This is a particularly useful cut to learn how to do with any sword, really, but especially the one-handed sword, as it's very good for getting around a buckler or a shield, and also quite good for taking a hand. Um, so we're going to cut up, and at the same time, we are going to step up with the left foot, so now I'm much more square. My hand will come up, around my head to the left, and then down, with just core turn. So, step, cut, okay? I don't let my hand go past me, I just bring it down to about here. This takes me into, essentially, a low slash open guard. I would not want to stand this way initially, but you will transition through it several times. So from here, I am going to step up forward into a basic hanging guard, okay? This should be pretty much exactly like my regimental hanging guard. My hand is high, this just stays where it is. I take a right foot forward stance, and I'm right here, but there's still a space between my legs. From here, I am going to 
do a wrist cut, a seven cut specifically, or it could also be a one cut, something that comes down from above, as I am going to take my left foot and step back in line with my own stance. So I am not stepping past myself. I'm just going from here to here. And I would even take this and move it a little bit in, sort of back weight myself because of the follow-up cut. But I'm here and I just cut straight down so that my sword ends up directly at my opponent. Show that again, just right there. This cut is particularly good for taking a hand, taking a head, you can combine it with the leg slip, etc. But, boom, I'm here. Now I'm just going to launch a straightforward thrust. Having prepped my back leg, I thrust in, and you can turn your sword slightly if you wish, doesn't particularly matter. And from here, I'm going to recover back into my open guard. And by default, I often find that I step all the way back into a left foot forward stance. It's just old habits. But, like I said, this particular cutting pattern is purely speculative. Um, we have no concrete historical basis. This is just something that the guys of the Caterin Society came up with to flow through their speculative guards. And it's a good cutting exercise. I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of the motions you're doing. It's traversal footwork with a sword that doesn't have a basket. So oftentimes you're keeping your hand more back as opposed to extended with the exception of the point forward guard. So I will now go through that a couple times so you can see it. And then we'll move on to our next cutting pattern. Actually, then I'll grab my shield. And I'll go over it again. So, open stance, cut, cut, step up, cut, thrust, step back. Open stance, cut, 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 hanging guard, cut, thrust, recover. Personal critique here on the cutting pattern, I find the recovering from the extended thrust all the way back to here to be a little bit meh, but, you know, I'd transition into something else myself. I would find that if I were to thrust, and this is pure speculative, I didn't script this, but off of here, since I've already gone this far forward, I would much rather recover with a cut than come back, honestly, a little moulinet and then back into place. You can certainly do that. It would be just once you're extended, you're just going to roll your wrist back and bring your right foot back as you execute a two cut, then just withdraw your arm. I like that a little better, actually. I think I'll start doing that. The fun of sword fighting. So, now I'll do it from the side. Here, cut, 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 up to hanging, boom, thrust, moulinet. Oh yeah, I like that a lot better. I'm gonna do that now. So, now I'll grab my shield and show you how little it changes. Ugh. So firstly, it's my Rotella. I don't think I've, I've shown it off before in the gear video, but um, we're in the process of painting it, so it's currently just a solid blue, but um, this is a good stand-in for a Targe. It's not perfect, a Targe is gonna be a little bit different in regards to size is relatively similar, a little smaller. Um, Construction-wise, it's going to feel different because it's it's flat and it's made of wood as opposed to domed metal. But it still works exactly the same for our purposes. So I'm just going to keep that up here. Now, when you're holding the shield, it should not be back on your head. Instead, slightly forward of your head. Okay. So it's just resting sort of naturally there. It's above my hairline, not down here. Down here, I'm gonna get clipped. Here, I am safe. Now, I will tell you, this is not particularly easy to hold. <laughs> um, the Italians, for example, will hold their, their rotel a lot more extended. This is the way I was trained to do it. This is the way I like to do it. But as per the position that we're being recommended, it can be held up here. Still does its job, still keeps me safe. Um, and this also leads into another reason I don't want to put my left foot forward. So, if you fight with a large shield, if you put your left foot forward, when someone cuts for your leg, your only defense is going to be to slip, because you will not want to lower the shield down. You can bring your sword across, but it's much harder to cut now that you have that larger shield. Not that you can't do it, just that it's a thing. Oftentimes I find that when I'm sparring, I ended up blinded, and if someone did a cut for my leg, especially from this side and my left foot was forward, I did not see it coming in time. Now part of that is practice. 
But as a general rule, I find that if I don't put my left foot forward and I'm using the rotella, I am much safer. So that's another reason that I don't put my left foot forward when I'm doing this. But enough gabbing, more stabbing. So here is the pattern now with my rotella. As you can see, very little changes. I'll do it from this side. So, that's just a fun little thing for you to practice if you happen to have an arming sword on hand, or if you're in my backsword class, because we're working through this at the moment. Like I said, there's no historical concrete evidence, but then again, there's no historical concrete evidence for Polish, well, okay, we know it happened, but there's no primary sources for Polish saber or a lot of the other stuff we do. It's forgivable. I think it has a long way to go in regards to interpretation, but we're working with what we got. Either way though, this is not bad for you in any way. Some general advice when cutting with the one hand though. One, make sure that you are gripping the arming sword in a relaxed grip. Don't be up here. Just relax, let the pommel touch your hand. That's good, it gives you actually a little bit of extra control. Number two, keep an eye on your edge alignment. Make sure that you're cutting with the wrist and the shoulder, not the elbow, okay? But other than that, exactly the same as any other sword. So, let's now move on to a different pattern, a different part of the world and a different philosophy. So, I have not talked about Fiore on the channel before. I don't, well, except for um, when we did our point forward guards video, in which case I mentioned several of his guards. The reason I haven't talked about Fiore is that it is something I've only recently started truly studying. Um, I have fought Fiore many, many times, um, and, and that has gave me a decent understanding of it. You learn about the people you fight. Um, really what it boils down to, because you know, there will be those people that say, oh, Leaknauer is better than Fiore, or, or Fiore is better than Leaknauer, and they were designed to fight each other. That's not true. Um, what it is, this is just two different philosophies, two different styles of system. Um, Fiore is more of a ground-up system, a personal system, his personal tradition, versus Leaknauer is more of a toolbox. Um, both are fine. Both are good adids. And if you mix them together, they work just fine. Um, the big difference is in regards to philosophy of movement. So, if we do things in the German style, when I cut, I use my right leg stepping forward with my initial opener to give myself a strong opening. Fiore, on the other hand, uses a lot more of volta stable type actions, which is where I turn my feet and my core with my actions. That gives me the same advantage as if I'd stepped, but that leaves me now so that I can bring my right foot forward for my follow-up action, which often happens in Messer, by the way. So it's just a different way of using the sword. But the Volta style blade in specific, specifically is a big part of Fiore's guards and his actions. It's often using that Volta style blade to take the center and then moving from there with your right step, okay? So this cutting pattern I came up with just goes through quite a few of his guards and it's nothing too complicated. It just moves through a couple, and I will tell you the names as I do them. So first, we're gonna start with our feet positioned backward. Now when I do this, as I said before, I am not standing linearly. I'm in my normal stance. I've just folded backwards, okay? So here I am, I have folded backward, and I've got my arms down here. My posture is upright, and I am back-weighted. This is Posta di Donna, the guard of the lady. From here, I, and don't ask me why these names are the way they are. But from here, I am going to execute a mendrito, which is a cut from my right to the center line as I turn my feet and my core to engage, okay? You notice my heel comes up? That's okay, that's kind of something you gotta do when you do this type of footwork. Once I am here, I am going to execute a step with my continued cut as I end up now down here in Dente de Shingaro, the boar's tooth. So, boom, step, okay? Now I'm prepped and low, I am going to execute a thrust that comes up like a boar's tusk. At the same time, I am going to step forward and out with my left foot, 
So I end up nice and positioned here in what is basically post longa, the long point. Now, once I am extended here, I am going to turn and fold back into finestra. Finestra meaning the window. And apologies for my Italian, it's never been particularly good. So, what we've gone over so far, boom, boom, fold back, okay? Finestra, my arms are not above my head, my tip can be slightly up or angled, but I am folded back. Once again, there is a space between my legs. My posture is upright. From here, I'm going to unwind as I launch an extended thrust, which I am going to step into, okay? Once I have stepped through it and I've extended myself to my utmost position, I'm going to fold back. Now I am in posta di dona sinestra, which is guard the lady on the left side. I'm going to now execute a mezzana, which is a middle cut, with my false edge. Okay? So this is the thing that Fiore does. When he cuts a mezzana, which is middle cut, from his left, it's with the false edge, rather than turning his sword over for the long edge. I don't know why, it's just what he does. So, boom, extension, fold back. I'm going to step out with my left foot. Here, as I execute my mezzana, it folds me back into Postlidona on the right side. From here, I'm going to execute another mezzana. This time, I'm going to fold up into Postlidona uh, Soprano, which is the high version. And I'm going to step forward with an almighty cut. Okay? So, that action, let's go over it another again. So I'll start from the extension, I'll be facing the camera. Boom, I just did my thrust out of Finestra. Fold back. Metsana, Metsana, big cut. Okay? Now, important note on these. One, Metsanas, or any Mittelhau. When you launch them, keep them at the level of your opponent's eye or their throat, and keep your hands below the tip. Don't let this happen. And don't let it come too high. Okay? Um, I am just doing a little triangle step with them, because that's what makes the most sense for me, uh, given Fiore's movement. Get off my foot, Ant. Um, and then when we go up into Soprano, this position in particular, Fiore notes, is very good for closing actions. He says this, if you're going to take this guard, you should be looking to close. So I'm doing a big cut against the opponent, preferably uh, knocking their sword to the side. Now I'm ready for all my grapple actions. So that's kind of what this is for. Though also it's just a good hue. Um, <laughs> I certainly would get through quite a few cutting patterns, uh, quite a few cutting targets if I did that. Now we've ended up left foot forward, and we're going to open ourselves into uh, Tutta Porta di Ferro, which is narrow iron gate. From the front, that looks like this. Similar to Shrongkut, but not quite. From here, we're going to come over, so I'm just making a little circle, boom, onto the center line, okay? Then I am going to thrust forward as I step forward out of um, post longa, boom, and to finish it off, I'm going to just turn my arms over and fold myself into bicorno, the two horns, which I talked about um, in the point forward video. Why finish in bicorno? I think it's cool. <laughs> um, originally I made this cutting pattern because I was working with one of my students who asked me to help him work through Fiore, um, using just my general fencing experience, and I wanted to have something that chained together his guards. So I came up with this, which also has the same application of his movement style. Because you could flow through this in a different way and it would not look like Fiore. So let's go through it from the top. Feel free to go with me. So, Posle Dona, cut, step forward, Dente Den Chingaro. Thrust, step up, Posle Longa, fold back. Finestra, big thrust, posta longa, step forward. From here, fold back, posti dona sinestra, step out for the mezzana, step out for the mezzana, soprano, big cut, tutto porta di ferro. Take the center line, posta longa, 
thrust, step forward, by corner, we're done. Okay. Now we'll do that facing the camera. And this does always kind of go forward. You can do it kind of going backward, but it doesn't work quite the same. So you should have a bit of a runway, if you will. So, post, eh, post Zidana, cut, boom, out of dente in Shingaro into post longa, finestra, big thrust, back into post sinestra, mezzana, mezzana, soprano, big entry, tutto porta di ferro, gain the center line, thrust, my corner. Okay, one more time this way, and then we'll call it. Here we are. So, boom, cut, thrust, fold back, thrust, fold back, mezzana, Metsana, big, open, open guard, in, thrust, fold back. Hopefully the camera caught all that. But that is my Fiore style cutting pattern. I recommend you take it slow. Get used to the Volta Stable and how it changes things. Um, I also recommend you do it with lighter shoes because you'll get a better appreciation for how your feet move. And it definitely matters in regards to doing Volta Stable. Um, as a note on Volta Stable, you should only turn back enough, right? So at the moment, hopefully you can see my feet, but here I am. I don't want to turn all the way back. So at the point that this heel goes past this toe, I have gone too far. Just right here. So I'm just lining up my core that way, which means that my cut is strong this way. Um, Besides that, that's kind of what I've got for you. Let's go over a little bit of shield exercise since quite a few of you have uh, Rotella and why not? I'm out here. Just surviving quarantine one day at a time. Okay. So here we are with your Rotella or other shield. Now I have done a one arm shield workout before, but that was with a center grip shield. This shield is now strapped to my arm, which changes things. So. To quickly reiterate some of the basics from there, you've of course got out, up, forward, which is always good. These are called copes, that's what I named them. And that's just generally good for you. You can also launch into thrusting. So I am here, thrust, turn it over, thrust, turn it over, thrust, turn it over, thrust, smack the barbarian's teeth, uppercut the barbarian, if you were doing this Roman style. Um, next thing you can also do is a little bit of flow with it. Now, be careful with this because it, it's going to take some getting used to. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut with the rim, roll my arm through, cut, roll my arm through. Just a general sort of movement. I'm using the rim lined up in the same way I would the sword. Okay? And I will now show that from the other side so you can see the inside of my arm as I do it. So, boom, 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 boom. And I just do it with triangle steps. So that's just some basic stuff you can do with the Rotella. <sighs> Beyond that, just practice holding it out. That's more than enough. But thank you all for joining me. We'll talk about some other techniques and other cutting patterns another time.